This session is all about seasonal marketing. Um, it's kind of really the basics. So it's how to do seasonal marketing for your food enterprise and some kind of tips and hints. Um, it's going to be particularly useful for um, uh, enterprises that use the Open Food Network, but that will only be a proportion of my presentation. I'll go over some ways that you can optimize your shop front um, to do better seasonal marketing. Um, and I've got some cool things that you can kind of download after the session and use to get started with your planning. And the reason why I wanted to do this session, it might feel quite early to be talking about seasonal marketing um, because it's August. <laughs> And you might be thinking, why are we talking about seasonal marketing now? Because the first thing we all think of is, is, is Christmas, right? Um, that's the kind of, that, that is really the kind of the yearly event that particularly as a food enterprise you want to be planning for in advance. Um, so I want to kind of talk about why it's useful to start thinking about these things now. And then also um, all of the different events that are coming up over the year that could be, um, if, if you're using kind of a seasonal approach to your marketing, how you can essentially get kind of more opportunity from some of the events that happen throughout the year. So it's, it, I guess doing seasonal marketing, it's a way of looking at your marketing that kind of makes the most of these seasonal opportunities through what you're kind of talking about with your customers. And so just as a kind of overview of some of the topics that I'm going to cover. So I'm just going to talk about what is seasonal marketing first, uh, why do it, and then where to start some tips for success. I'm gonna share some resources and I've got quite like a, um, a chunky kind of ideas section. And when we get to the ideas section as well, um, I, it'd be really awesome if um, anyone here today has anything that they'd like to share about things that they've done before in the past with their food enterprise that's worked well for them. Um, and I've also got some, some nice things that I'm gonna share in here. Um, one of them is a kind of a template for an email marketing campaign, which I think I've talked about briefly in one of my email marketing webinars, but I'm gonna talk about it here in the context of how useful it is doing kind of email campaigns for, for seasonal marketing. Okay, so first of all, what is seasonal marketing? So it's, it's really simple, really. It's just a way, it's, a type, it's an approach to your marketing where you're identifying opportunities throughout the year and kind of planning to make the most of them. So by doing seasonal marketing, you're really making the most of all of these different timings throughout the year where you can, for example, grow your food enterprise or perhaps, yeah, by taking this kind of, oh, someone else just entered the waiting room, just gonna add them, cool. And also seasonal marketing is create is, is maybe like a campaign focused approach to marketing. So creating different campaigns throughout the year, or it could also be sales activities throughout the year targeted to seasonal events. Yeah. Back. I'm gonna mute Lauren. Thanks for joining us, Lauren. I'm just muting you, so I heard a bit of background noise there. Uh, but I just wanna say, um, as you've just joined us, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat uh, or unmute and, and let me know as I'm going. So I'm starting off with just a few slides, but then we'll have plenty of time to chat about things uh, um, uh, afterwards. It's probably gonna be about 20, 30 minutes of slides max. So, um, and yeah, so what I mean by sales activities is, this is one of the kind of great things if you're having like a seasonal approach to your marketing is that then you can look as well at different produce that you have that's available at different times throughout the year and start to kind of target your sales activities um, through your marketing for particular produce. So say for example, in January, you have um, beautiful uh, oranges or satsumas that suddenly come into stock if you are, uh, I know that Tamar, for example, around January, they always have um, lovely satsumas from, I think, Spain or several oranges or oh, brain foggy but um so they have in January this like lovely opportunity to focus on this one hero produce so it this is also something that you kind of you can weave into your marketing plans throughout the year if you're looking at what you're doing on a kind of seasonal basis um so next I want to talk about why do it I mean, one of the main reasons is that it, your, your customers care about these seasonal events, um, particularly when it comes to things like the big um, seasonal events like Christmas or Halloween, or even if it, it helps you to create content and to create campaigns that are relevant to your customers' lives. Because, you know, lots of research shows and you only have to go into a, like, shop anytime around Christmas <laughs> to know that people really care about these events. So it's you know, it, your customers care about this. So by talking about these different seasonal events, um, oh, I don't know why that just happened. 
Um, so by talking about certain these season these seasonal events as they happen, it's helping you to stay to to be speaking about things that are relevant to your customers' lives. And the more relevant you are, um, the more your customers kind of feel uh, like it, it's a way of helping your customers trust you because you're talking about things that are relevant to them. It's like, and it also shows that you care about your customers and what's going on for them in their lives. Um, and it also ensures that you don't miss out on valuable opportunities for growth. So, I, it, I mean, you might not miss Christmas because it's just so massive um, in terms of how customers behave. But you might miss, for example, back to school, or you might suddenly think in September about, oh, what can we do as a food enterprise for, for back to school? And by then you might have missed some time for planning. So, uh, you know, it's the same thing with maybe with Easter or you know, there are certain things throughout the year that you might not have such an impact on how your customers behave. So you might miss those opportunities. So if you're looking at your marketing seasonally, it really helps you to ensure that you don't miss out on these different opportunities. And if you're planning in advance, it gives you almost like this framework where when you've got a framework of, oh, we need to think about Christmas here. Let's think about Valentine's Day this year. We haven't done that before. It gives you a chance then when you have this framework or this calendar, essentially, it gives you more space to be more creative and to think in a kind of campaign focused way or shall we do something around Halloween this year? And then that gives you, if you're planning that in advance, it gives you time perhaps to find producers who you might not have approached before who might be able to supply you with seasonal produce so it just gives you the, the this having a framework um, where you're thinking seasonally gives you yeah it gives structure to your planning which will enable you to be maybe more of it, a bit more creative about what what you're doing um, yeah and also if you're kind of thinking seasonally as well it means that you can kind of track over the course of the year how you know you can kind of start to look at maybe different times of the year where you might have seen a peak in sales or dips in sales and look at that in a kind of seasonal way which will then help you as you grow or in the next year to then kind of maybe plan activities around those kinds of peaks and troughs so it's just it's just a way of being more strategic um, and it's quite an easy way to start being more strategic with with what you're doing with your marketing and sales so this is like a really this is the most basic way to start. You could start this literally with a pen and paper, get a piece of A4 and just create like a grid of the four different seasons. And you could start to just plot out what are the key dates here. And then from literally just making these notes, you could then start to trace backwards. Okay, so we have this, this and this happening in winter. When would we need to plan for this? So you can make this as simple or as complicated as you want to. So I just wanted to show you this as being the most simple way to look at what's happening throughout the year. You could then have this maybe as an April piece of paper, you've drawn a grid, you've written down some notes, you could pin this to a notice board above your desk, and then it just helped or above, you know, even wherever you're doing your work for the food enterprise, it might not be a desk, it might be the sofa, but it could be something when you've got like a, um, even a, yeah, just something to remind you that these different things are happening and to help you to plan in advance. So this is more of the kind of simple end of the spectrum. And I've created this template um, Google Sheets document that you could use if you wanted to do something a little bit more in depth um, and maybe a little bit more complicated. So here <laughs> is, I mean, it's still fairly, fairly simple. I'm still hearing some background noise. I'm just going to check. We're all muted. Huh, weird. I wonder if it's coming from me. There's nothing happening in the, <laughs> in the room. But so and sorry if I'm talking too fast, by the way, I just had a coffee and I'm not a coffee drinker, so I might be talking a bit faster than normal. So here is a sample um, campaign calendar. And this is a template that you can make a copy of and use for your own planning. So it might be a nice way to get started with this. I mean, included some, so it's like a nice, yeah, a nice template that might help prompt you to think about some of these things around creating different seasonal campaigns. I've split it up into what I've identified as being key dates or things to consider as a food enterprise. So for example, 
Um, you can see the different months in September, you might want to think about back to school. And by thinking about back to school, this is, is there anything that you can, is this something you can talk to your producers about? Do they have anything that might be useful for parents who are preparing for back to school? Anything that's suitable for lunch boxes, things like that. Could you then think about doing maybe um, like bundles, which are good for creating lunch boxes or, you know, if, like for example, slices of cake, that would be good for a lunch box. Um, and then you've got Halloween, Christmas, New Year, Valentine's Day, and then spring and, or, and Easter and then summer. So just with a few little key dates here. And so along the left, when you're looking at this later, if you'd like to use this, this template to get started, I, these are just some prompts that I've put in um, of different things you can think about when you're planning different campaigns throughout the year. So this could be when you begin to plan. So you might want to put, you know, begin to plan in August, Christmas, you might want to start planning here. Um, you might want to start planning for Christmas in September. So it's kind of putting in here these different kind of times of when you want to start planning. And then this could be something that you just bring up maybe on a like a monthly basis and just have a look at the month ahead and think, what should I be planning about now? So it's one way to get organized with that. Maybe here you could put the goals for these different campaigns. So I mean, this could be about growing your food enterprise and bringing on new customers. So it's just starting to identify the different goals that you'd like to have at different times of the year. So around Christmas, um, we've identified that lots of food enterprises tend to gain um, new customers around Christmas. So perhaps one of your goals around Christmas could be about gaining new customers. Or another thing you could think about is maybe increasing basket sizes uh, around Christmas because people are more likely to shop for maybe more kind of not just luxury goods but maybe more things over Christmas in general or gift ideas and things like that so your goals could change throughout the year maybe in the new year you might have a different goal where you might want to start um, maybe focus on increasing your email list um, or how many people are subscribed to your email so it's starting to think this prompt is to start to think of like different times throughout the year and what your goal might be as an enterprise how you'd measure this um, some key dates and Here's some other prompts. So you could have hero products that you might want to focus on throughout these different uh, seasonal um, times. So for Christmas, you might have you might have different seasonal products here that you might want to focus on. Um, an example that I mentioned earlier about the several oranges um, from uh, for, for Tamar, they maybe be looking at this, um, at talking about this in the new year or even before. And um, any special offers that you might want to be doing around these times. So it's key messages or different things you might want to say. Um, the main channels that you might want to be talking about these things. Is this something where you might be doing an email campaign where you're going to be talking about this mostly on social media? Um, would you like to create any promo materials for these um, different events? I've got a lovely example um, later on in the slides of some promo materials that um, hubs have done around different events throughout the year. And um, what's your kind of key call to action at this time? If any of these points don't make sense, um, stop me and, and ask me, or we can talk about it in the q and I can bring this up again and go into it in more detail. Um, but this is another slightly more complicated than the first one I showed you, but it's another way of kind of organizing your a seasonal approach. So I check there's nothing else I want to say around here. Um, No, okay. Uh, yes, um, just one of the reasons why you want to take the time to create a plan like this is it just it will just help manage stress levels. Um, so if you're kind of focusing on Christmas in November and it just kind of blindsides you, then you might find that a stressful process to think about your marketing for Christmas rather than if you'd thought about it in September and started to put some plans in place. So do you want to create a brochure this year for Christmas or a flyer? And then that gives you plenty of time then to plan some special activity for Christmas. Also, another benefit of planning in advance with a candidate it isn't just about marketing. If you're looking at your marketing, then um, a knock on effect of this is that you'll start thinking about Christmas maybe in September, October, which then gives you plenty of time to prepare yourself operationally for what might be an increase in sales in, in the Christmas season. So it, you know, it's just a way again of, um, like if you're doing this for your marketing, you'll then automatically be thinking about these different times when you might be seeing peaks in sales from an operational perspective. And also as a kind of an equivalent thing that you think about then 
you know, say for example, after Christmas, you might see a January drop. If you're aware of that from a marketing perspective, that gives you a chance to maybe plan in advance um, something you could do in, in January that might help you to um, work with that lull. Um, I mean, you might want the lull after Christmas so that you can recover, but then if you don't want to see a drop in your sales, then it gives you a chance to think, can we do anything in January that might help us to um, maintain sales? Maybe not to the same level as Christmas, but it might just mean that you might not see such a lull if, for example, you plan a free delivery fortnight, for example, whether that's in the realms of what you could do as a hub or not, but that's just something, you know, an example of something you could think about to help you in January to not see such a drop in sales. Um, Anything else? Uh, yeah, no, I think that's everything I wanted to say here. So this is, yeah, something I was just talking about. So um, you can improve your seasonal performance by managing peaks and addressing dips in sales. So um, it's a really good practice to track your national seasonality. If you're a fairly new hub or enterprise, you might not be able to track this, but if you're more established, you might have um, years before where you can actually look at your sales throughout the year and see if you can start to notice if you have any particular peaks or dips at certain times. And then think around that time, was there anything that happened around that time that might have you know, meant that you saw an increase in sales? Um, and then start to track that. So this can then help you looking at yourselves to be more strategic and also understand your customer's behavior, which then therefore will help you to, yeah, to respond in a way that's beneficial to your hub. Um, and then also if you're kind of doing this as well, you can, it gives you time to decide on an approach which works for you and you can try different things throughout the year and see what works for you. And here's some resources that I just wanted to include. I'm gonna share these slides after the session. Um, so I've sent some, uh, here are some links to um, where you can look at different days that are happening throughout the year, which might also, this is a great way of just thinking of prompts for marketing content as well. So if you're ever stuck thinking about what to post, you can have a look at awareness days, days of the year and see if there's anything relevant going on that could help you, prompt you to be talking about something relevant in your marketing content. Um, also, I want to say about this is that we, in the Thriving Food Hubs Facebook group, um, we do a Monday, did I see someone in there? No. Um, we do a social media prompts post on a Monday in the Thriving Food Hubs Facebook group. And normally there will, um, it's usually Louise that's doing it, but I'm gonna be picking up on that for the coming weeks. And we we'll usually pick out if there's any important days that are, are happening in that week. And so we'll, we often, if you look in the Thriving Food Hubs um, Facebook group, you'll see, a post every week that will help you um, keep track of one things here that might be relevant for your hub. Um, also Canva is a really great resource if you want to create seasonal um, looking posts or add some kind of seasonal flair to your imagery. And here's a couple of links to resources where you can find images that you can use for free that will perhaps help you to create more seasonal imagery for your enterprise. And here's some ideas for you to try. I wanted to show you here. So here's a Christmas brochure, which Tamar did last year, which is really lovely. Um, and this is giving you an example of if you plan in advance, the kind of things that you could create. So they created this really wonderful brochure, which you can download here. So the links in the slides, when you see it, you can download and have a look at a copy for yourself. Um, and this is something that Rachel created in Canva. So, and the Canva is a free um, design tool that you can find online. I've also done a webinar which goes into more detail of how to use Canva, um, like the very basic of getting stuff from Canva. Um, so here you can see that they've done this lovely brochure which gives them an opportunity to like join in with the excitement that the customers are feeling about this um, seasonal event. And also it gives them a chance to talk about um, Tamar and some of their um, successes throughout the year. So it's a really lovely opportunity to reach your customers when they're in this kind of um, seasonal headspace almost and kind of connect with them there whilst also kind of um, helping them to see the different things that you're offering that are relevant for this event throughout the year. So for this event, like Christmas only happens once per year, not throughout the year. Thank yeah, thankfully. <laughs> I think we'd all be exhausted if it was Christmas throughout the year. Um, so yeah, I, I recommend having a look at this. Um, it's really lovely. And also it's, again, it's a, I mean, it's really beautifully done, but you can put here all the details that you 
yeah, and you might wonder if customers are able to see um, or on your on your shop front or wherever you interact with your customers, it gives you a chance to put everything in one place. Um, and it just looks really, it's really lovely as well. So this is just a really beautiful example that I encourage you to take a look at. Um, and if we get back to the slides. Um, also, you can do things like seasonal themed videos. Um, and another example from Tamar who um, really pull out all the stops for, for that kind of Christmas marketing. Um, Sarah from Tamar did a really lovely Christmas video where she read a poem that Rachel had written, a seasonal poem whilst dressed as an elf. So um, whether you might like to do something like that, maybe, but just the, the idea is that if you can think of something seasonal, it's a really lovely thing to do. Um, there's also lots of other really lovely things you can do that are on, on social media. So I might share some more examples of different things that hubs have done in the event page. Um, for example, Bow House did this really lovely seasonal countdown where they chose like a seasonal um, product and they create then crafted that product into the shape of a number and they used that as the seasonal countdown to Christmas. Um, Tamar did another one where they did it with sprouts. And I think they they like took photos of the sprouts, they took a sprout away, and that was like a kind of almost like an advent countdown to Christmas. So yeah, so it could be something that you could get really creative about. And an email campaign. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Here. Um, and so an email campaign is a really useful tool in any kind of campaign that you're doing. And what I mean by an email campaign is it's not your standard newsletter, it's not your standard order cycle opening or closing email, but it's a targeted, essentially like a targeted sales email. But you can create a campaign with this email to last over the duration of when you're talking about this seasonal event. So I'm going to use while I'm explaining this an example of, of Christmas. Um, and this is something that I've I've use effectively with um, a variety of different organizations and it's particularly good um, I, I, I had a really amazing response for doing exactly this framework of an email campaign with um, a charity that I worked with who got, had their best ever Christmas campaign through using exactly this um, email uh, calendar template. So you start off by sending one email um, to your audience where it's just focused on this campaign, on this seasonal event, so say it's Christmas, you send your first Christmas email, it might be at the beginning of December, it might be mid-November, depending on how you want to time it. But essentially it's letting your customers know that you're um, starting to sell um, seasonal produce. It could be where you're highlighting if you have any um, particularly beautiful seasonal produce that your producers are offering, if there's anything that's new to your hub that's seasonal. So it's kind of introducing this topic and that you are essentially open for Christmas. Um, and it could, the, in terms of the format, it's completely down to your food enterprise, you know your customers, so um, yeah, so it's crafting something that would work well with your customers, it could be a link to a lovely video, it could be, um, again, really simple, just what seasonal produce is now in stock, um, it could also be informational as well, like when will you be opening your order cycles for Christmas so that your customers definitely don't miss it. Um, and it could be if you've got any special things that you're doing over Christmas, like any special offers or if there's any extra deliveries. So it's just really thinking about what information would your customers want to know around and which is seasonal and um, valuable for them to know. So then the you send the first email and the next stage is if you, you then resend so it's essentially like what I mean by campaign is like talking about this one topic i.e Christmas so you send your first email and then if you're using um a some if you're using something like MailChimp you'll be able to see who has opened and who hasn't opened that email and then you essentially continue this story of Christmas by sending anyone who has opened this first email another email on this same topic, but building on the information you've already given them. So say if the first email is really informational, um, Christmas is coming, where our Christmas order cycle is this, here's our new seasonal project, like products. Um, then email two could be maybe building on that if you have new seasonal products in, in stock, if you are starting to sell gifting items, um, you could you know perhaps focus on one product for the first email and then another product for the second email, but you want your second email to tell a different story but still with the theme of Christmas. So it's relevant to your customers and they might, they'll be starting to think about their Christmas 
So then, um, then there'll be a third email in the series, which you might want to send. And this would maybe be more your order cycle, Christmas order cycles, closing kind of last call type email. So you've got these three emails spread over Christmas. And these are in addition to whatever you're normally doing, like your newsletters or your um, order cycle closing and opening emails, because this is a specifically Christmas focused email. So this is where then these other actions of reaching people who might not have seen different emails in this flow um, comes into play. Because then if people don't, if your audience doesn't, members of your audience who haven't opened email one um, would then be resent email one, but with a different subject if they haven't opened this email within a week, for example. And I've shown how to, I, I can do a, for example, if you're using, People use different email platforms. So I haven't shown here exactly how to do this because it would depend on how you're sending your emails. But this is definitely something that if people are interested in an actual email campaign workshop where we can work on this together and I can show you exactly how to set this up and we can set up a dummy campaign together, then let me know and we can work on this. Um, or if you don't want a workshop, but you just want me to send you a how-to, I can also show you a how-to as well. And I'll share that in the event page, but just let me know if this is something that you don't know how to do. So if emails aren't opened, then this first email isn't opened. You can then resend email one with a different subject line because um, it's unlikely after a week that an, or like someone who's received that email is going to open that email. So it's safe to send them the same email, but maybe just tweak the subject line. So it's just something a little bit different because the, if they haven't opened the first one, then maybe they won't open the second one with the same subject line. And then if they open the second one, then you want to, within a couple of days, um, resend them the second email. So they're then kind of pulled into this flow here. Then if they don't open this, then they just essentially keep getting sent email one until they open email one. And then when they open email one, then they're pulled into this new flow. Um, and then, oops, and then, Finally, if they've not opened email one, then everyone gets the final last call email. Sorry, could I just interrupt one little second? Yeah. Okay, when you were saying um, you could show us how to set all this up, does it, can, with MailChimp, can you set this up so it happens automatically? Yes, um, I think with this, so with, yeah, you can, but I'm not sure if it's on the different pack, like different packages than the free package, because you can send automations. But I also think that it's also quite good if you're doing an email campaign to essentially like really hold it. And as you're kind of going through this process, you can create, for example, what you could do in advance is you could create each of these emails, these three emails here in advance, and you've got those ready. And then you could send them and I guess what, I, do you mean that when someone doesn't open an email, then it gets kind of understood by MailChimp, they haven't opened it and they get sent it automatically a week later? Um, I don't think you can do that. I think it would just be a case of manually doing it, but it wouldn't be a case of um, sending it individually one by one. What would happen is you send the first email, a week later, you look, you then send the second email. When you're sending the second email a week later, you can then see who in the first email has opened the emails. You then send those people email two. You look at who hasn't opened email, you then send them email one. So that happens at the same time and it's really straightforward and easy to do. So essentially you have an email send week one, a week later, you then do a second email send. Some people get the first email again if they haven't opened it and some people get this new email. So it's not like you're sending lots and lots of emails. So essentially it's a really straightforward process. I think I'm just explaining it badly. because No, no, I, I'm getting what you're saying, but I'm thinking about the following week when you're then sending email three to those that have responded to email two, but you've then got two different groups of people, haven't you? Because you've got then people that still haven't responded to email one and people that haven't responded to email two. So you're going to have all sorts of different tracks yeah. that you have to watch. It, it, they are quite, it, it sounds really complicated, but it actually, when you're sitting down and doing it, it's not, I think it's because I'm not sure, it's actually quite straightforward. So what would happen is that, so then you've got here, um, okay, so say on this week, you've got people who, who have, so email two people who don't open email two, 
won't get resent email one, but when you go into email two, you can then see who has and hasn't opened the email and whoever hasn't then gets resent email two. So essentially it sounds really complicated because I'm probably not showing you the MailChimp, but this is actually quite a straightforward process because you just then, when you're sitting down to do the next email, you look at the emails you sent them before. So you then would just have like an email to send and you'd have a resend of the email one. So you'd only have these two emails to check every week and whoever opened email two gets sent three and whoever didn't get open email two gets sent email two again. And whoever didn't open any, like who still hasn't opened email one then just gets resent email one or sent email two. But it's essentially you're just looking at two emails and then okay and can you can you give me just an idea of content for the three emails why it's important to um build on the story yeah it's because essentially you're taking people on it's because it's a campaign it's you're not just say sending them the same email over and over the people that have opened it they're almost being taken on this journey with you throughout christmas like this is an email series that they're getting throughout the christmas period so it's your, you've got this opportunity to kind of essentially join them as they're in this build up towards Christmas with their family and their friends and their gift shopping. And so it's like, you don't want to just be sending the same email over and over. It's like you send one, which has one thing and the second email, it's, it's essentially you're kind of building this relationship through content and through your emails. And it's also like, if they've opened the first email, the second email is then like just ensuring that you're front of mind when they actually make their Christmas orders at different points. So say email one, they might be thinking about gifts for Christmas, in which case this is when they might then shop with you earlier than Christmas for gifts. At point two, they might be thinking about where they're gonna do their Christmas shopping. It means that you're kind of front of mind then for the order cycle. So essentially they're kind of a special Christmas order cycle kind of opening or closing reminder. And then for three, again, it's this special seasonal last call for Christmas type message. So it's just a, a kind of a more engaging way of doing like an order cycle closing reminder is, as well as also being a sales email because what you're selling is don't forget our food enterprise this Christmas. Like make sure you're shopping with us because you've got all of these amazing local products that you can get from us that you might be able to get elsewhere or, you know, like showing them the options of different lovely gift items that you might have in your hub. So it's just, yeah, so it's kind of, and I, there's also, I mean, for a food enterprise, this is essentially just a way of staying front of mind around Christmas, which means that people might be just a bit more likely to shop with you and then going and doing their whole shop at the, the supermarket, for example. Um, and also, again, this is content marketing. So part of this is it's, it's building trust with your audience. It's showing them that you care about them and you care about what they care about as they're thinking about Christmas. If they are opening your emails, this is amazing because then they're, they're then again engaging with you throughout this period on this topic. So it goes back to what I was saying about why do seasonal marketing? It's because you're showing your customers you care about what they care about. And part of this is also you're kind of engaging with them in their positive feelings around these seasonal events. So, and, and would you suggest no longer than no longer than a week between the emails? It depends on how you want to space it out over Christmas. I think it's quite effective to do this. You could start this when people might be gift planning at the end of November, you know. So it's or even some people. A good rule of thumb is like I know it does annoy some people how soon shops start talking about Christmas, but it's actually this is when people really do start thinking about Christmas. They start to see it in the shops around them. They start to see it. Um, on the tally so it's like this whether it annoys you or not this is when people start to think about oh no I need to start my Christmas shopping and so it is front of mind so it could be mid-November after bonfire night that you might want to just put the first email out which could be around gift ideas so if you have any lovely gift ideas in your hub then you know the, or if you're doing your Christmas planning in advance you could have maybe this year when you haven't before because you're planning in advance for Christmas, you could have approached your producers. Do you have any ideas for gift options? You know, do you want to do a gift hamper this year for Christmas? Do you do any of your producers want to create lovely Christmas wreaths, for example? It's like it gives you an opportunity to then maybe talk to your producers about do they have any lovely gift options that they might want to do over Christmas? Do they do you have any um, hubs that create pre preserves that might want to do a Christmas version that you could then put as a gift option over Christmas? Um, 
So you could be with the first email talking about gifting mid-November when people are thinking about, I want to plan my, what I'm buying people for Christmas in advance. Um, and you've also got like a chance of maybe weaving story in here. And this is why in, e in email, you've got more space than on social media to, to talk about essentially like topics that your customers care about as well as what you want your customers to know. So as you're talking about gifting options, perhaps for Christmas, you could be talking about why it's a great idea to support local at Christmas. You know, why, you know, a really thoughtful gift from your local community, like from a local community producer is a lovely thing to give for Christmas as opposed to, you know, like something that's not as well thought out. So obviously in the own words and the words of your hub, but it just gives you this chance to, yeah, to communicate with your customers in a slightly different way and in a different place because email is a lot more um, personal than social media. So you might be talking about this on social media, but like there's something about like a personal email that's talking about these things. It's just you're, you're reaching your customers in a, in a more personalized space. So, and yeah. And then for example, with email too, that could be at the beginning of Christmas. If you have any like cool social media plans for Advent, for example, you, you could talk about that there, like keep, keep an eye on our social media for our own Advent calendar countdown and then have, maybe you've planned something on your social media and it's just, it's just this kind of, um, that's the thing with content marketing. It just shows your customers you care about what they do and it gives you an opportunity to um, create more of a relationship with them through these activities. Um, and email two, you could be talking, you, this is maybe where you might wanna be more informative at the beginning of the month. This is what's happening. This is our calendar. This is, um, this is when you need to make your order um, to be in time for Christmas. Also, for example, if you're selling Christmas turkeys or Christmas birds, which could sell out, you might want, for example, to be talking here, they sell out every year, make sure you get your orders in early. Also, if you're doing this as well, you're notifying your customers, um, this could be a way where if, for example, in email one mid-November, you start to talk to people about getting their Christmas bird orders in early, then that gives you a chance then to give your producers lots of notice in advance of how many, you know, if you have, for example, people making their orders or being on a wait list early, then it just helps you to, yeah, it, it, it can help you operationally as well to plan in advance. And email is the most direct way to speak to your customers about these things. They might see it, they might not on social media, they might not open your newsletter that often, or they might do, but if you've got a really engaged um, audience, but they might open something that's like targeted Christmas. Yeah, because that's what they're thinking about um, rather than kind of like your standard newsletter which they see in their inbox every every month or every couple of weeks so it's just it's just another way to kind of stand out as well in your customer's inbox and for these people who are opening every single one it's this lovely journey that you're going on with them through Christmas where they're receiving emails from you regularly maybe every week or every other like mid-November beginning of December then second week of December for example it's yeah, it's this nice continuity. And also I wanna say as well um, that make sure, so this this actual image was from a, um, like actually something that I used around kind of campaigns, um, donations campaigns. So it could also be something that you could then weave in to talk about your food enterprise. So for everyone that's opened email one and gets email two, you could thank people in that email, thanks to everyone who have already made their orders for gift products or have made their um, order for your Christmas bird, for example. So it's like um, making sure that you start the next email acknowledging that people have read your previous email is, is a nice thing to do. And the reason why I bring this up here is because it's particularly important if it's like in a donations campaign for those of us in the room who might not be a food, like food enterprises and a food hub. Um, if you rely on kind of donations or contributions, it's for each of these emails, it's really important to thank anyone who's already contributed because they're getting a second email essentially asking them for support. So they receive email one asking for support, then they get a lovely second email, which then builds on what you've already spoken about. But at the beginning, you want to say thanks to everyone who's already contributed or supported us. So it's, yeah. Um, I feel like this could almost be a whole workshop in itself. And I've try to kind of explain it as clearly as I could in a short space of time and I hope I haven't kind of made it more confusing um but this is just an idea of something that you could do but this could also rather than over complicated things you could literally just send three emails over Christmas that are following from this campaign it's just 
if you have people that haven't opened the first email, they're then maybe missing out on the content in here that you, because each email is different. So you probably, you might want to resend email one to them so that they can, you know, then follow on this story. Um, but yeah, I'm also happy to show this in MailChimp with a dummy campaign where it will definitely click. And you'll see what I mean, to, um, Rachel, about it actually being more simple than I've made it seem here, um, because it's you do it based on the email. So you see the email and then you go into the email and then you can see who's seen it, who has it. And then you just send each group a separate email at that moment. It's not like you're sending lots of emails like at different times. It's quite it's quite. Um, it's like a it's like a simple process when you're doing it. Cool. So I've just got some extra things that I just want to put in here. And this is the bits that are a bit more beneficial for um, food enterprises that have an RFN shop front. And that's that it's a really nice idea as well to make sure that you are also kind of injecting kind of some seasonality in your images. And this is like, a, it can seem like one extra thing to do, why bother? But again, it's this, um, overall sense of keeping things fresh on your shop front, whilst also creating a space where you're interacting with customers with the things that they're thinking about. So it just helps you feel more relevant. And this could be, for example, um, making your cover image more seasonal. It could be um, creating images that are specifically focused on a certain event like Valentine's Day. Um, so it's just using this space where you can to create a, uh, yeah, a, a relevant space. And, and also this is something you can do on Facebook. Um, so you could add a frame to your profile image on Facebook, but then you can also use this in other places as well. So although this, these are some, I, I'm just, these, some of these ideas are from uh, a presentation that Louise did. And I would just say from my kind of slightly geeky kind of, um, decides that I wouldn't overlay things on your logo. I'd try and have some white space around it and then have like a, a seasonal kind of fringe um, rather than having it kind of overlaid because that can seem a bit visually chaotic, but it's a way of kind of, again, having this sense of being like relevant, timely that you're, yeah. Um, and you can, yeah, here's just a little step-by-step -step of how to do it on our fan. Um, this is something I've already actually spoken about just in the course of, of chatting. Um, think about how can you diversify your product range around these key seasonal dates. So big example is Christmas. Um, could you have producers supply Christmas wreaths or handmade gift items? This could be something to think about Valentine's Day. Um, I know a food enterprise that has a supplier who makes heart shaped pasties, which are frozen. So they're easy to, so it's just like, think like, yeah, thinking creatively about different things that you can talk to your producers about um, for these different days. And it's also a way that you're helping your producers as well, maybe think of things they haven't thought about, which could help them maybe make more money or make more sales over these key dates. Um, also make sure you have um, updated photos uh, for your products over these seasons. So yeah, um, you, if you ha don't have your own photo, then you can use one from a, uh, um, a stock image. And there's some more advice here. There's a link you can go to later about how to optimize your products on the RFN and get just different ideas for seasonal gifts. Um, so here's just like a list of different ideas, boxes of chocolates around Valentine's Day, for example. And it's just also kind of nice prompts at different times of the year if you're looking at things in a strategic seasonal way of helping you to maybe know which producers to approach perhaps like to join your hub as well. And also kind of other items. Um, so handcrafted homeware or locally made knitwear. So some ideas here for you. Also hampers um, as well, could be a nice idea. And another thing which is good maybe throughout the whole year, which isn't just a seasonal thing, this could be something maybe around Valentine's Day or it could be around Christmas when people are likely to give gifts. But this could also be something that you could have running always as something that people could then give as a birthday present, for example, like a, a voucher or a gift, gift subscription. Um, okay, thank you. Um, so time for some Q&A. So it's a little bit less time than I thought. I think I got a bit stuck on my chaotic email marketing image which I think I might revise um so there's, I'm just going to quickly look through the chat ah oh, hi Ben sorry that I missed your chat question about main channels what I mean by main channels is 
you know, where are you most likely to be talking about this thing? Would it be social media? Would it be email? Um, do you have any other ways that you reach your customers? Could it be um, word of mouth? Are you doing any print advertising? Fly? You know, so it's just what I mean by channels is essentially different ways that you're reaching your customers, your audience. Um, or it could also even be which social media platforms are you going to focus on for this? Um, and a hero product could be, it could be the product that sells a lot um, at those different times. It could also be a new product that you want to give a really, like if you put on a new producer and you really want them to get a good um, result with working with your food enterprise straight off the bat, then it could be, for example, their produce that you really want to give a boost at that time. Um, and it could be something where, I, I, this one with caution, a product that isn't, working isn't getting as many sales as you'd like but you'd like it to get more sales you could simply then this month they're going to hear this product and just talk about it a lot more it, by hearing a product that means that then you're recognizing you want to give that product a boost you then want to talk about it more on social media and it just helps to prompt you to then talk about this product could prompt you to think of different disc like maybe a promo that you could do around that product um can i, can I just interrupt you to just ask do you call it, a hero part like I'm talking Facebook because we don't do emails yeah would you call something you know this week's hero product is that you a could, thing to do? yeah you, you could do that um I, that's also kind of maybe like an internal way of calling it that you're going to hero this product this product is your hero of the month kind of thing and yeah. you could also say yeah this is our hero product of the month um and talk about why it's to the audience, but yeah. Yeah, talk about why it's so amazing. And if it's like, say, for example, a lovely home baked cake, why is that cake so amazing? Who made it? What are they about? So it's just a way of, um, yeah, and you could be doing that on seasonal products, which is the easiest win because then people are thinking about that product and then they know that you're stocking it and then that could bring them to your hub to then look for other things as well. Um, but it also could be if you want to give a product boost that's not doing very well. That one I say use with caution because, um, I mean, I yeah, um, because you might get better results doing that, putting that extra marketing effort in for a product that you know already does well, because then you might be bringing people who knew like if a product's already doing well, that means that your current customers like it and want it, which means that potential new customers are likely to like it and want it too. So if you're hearing that product, that's a bit of an easier win for potentially new customers or even current customers that haven't thought about you in a while. They're like, oh yeah, that thing that they do is amazing. I'm gonna so that's an easier win. But if it's a product that isn't doing well, there might be other reasons why it's not doing well. So you might put this effort into promoting that product and you might not overall get as good a result. But if you really want, if, you, if you're trying to decide whether to keep selling a product, then it might be a nice way to at least give that product um, a, a, a chance to do a bit better. It might just be that people don't know that you're doing that product. Um, and definitely one thing would be if you have a new producer, you know, that they're coming in and they're going to have this amazing thing. Um, you might want to give them a boost as their first experience with you. And then your customers know that this new, this, yeah, this new, new item is available. Um, and yes, um, I've put, I've got a link in the slides to the planner, but I, I, I could put it in the chat as well. Um, let me just put it in the chat just in case. Um, you don't access the slides. The slides, will, I always put the slides in the event page. I'm a bit behind um, posting previous recordings of other webinars. Um, I've had a slightly chaotic couple of weeks, but I am catching up this week. So there should be like an influx of, um, of videos of previous webinars in their respective event pages on the Thriving Food Hubs group. Um, so I'm just gonna get the link to this and post it for you. Um, one second. Cool. And what you want to do is when you go to the link, um, you first of all want to go file, make a copy. So you make your own copy, which means that it's editable for you. Um, you can also then down this, though, you know, it doesn't have to be in Google Sheets. You can also then open this in um, Excel as well. So it's been a while since I've used Excel, so I forgot the word. Um, and Okay, and, and yes, definitely pumpkins at Halloween, for example. That's a really good example. Um, and the group's called um, Thriving Food Hubs. I'm gonna send you a link to that as well. And there's lots of different uh, webinar um, videos in there. Um, we've got lots of previous events. If you go to the event tab, 
you can see all of the previous webinars that we've done and often you'll find the video and resources in there um, for each of the events but you can also find it in the tab that's called guides and there's lots of different um, content in there not just webinars but also like useful tick sheets of um, some operational stuff in there as well so it's not all marketing but other useful useful things um, and okay I've just put a link to the Thriving Food Hubs Facebook group please join it and please feel free if you have any questions to post them openly into the group there's a really um, awesome um, bunch of amazing food enterprises in there that are always really um, what's the word like happy to help and, and share their experience which is which is really awesome to see so yeah a dummy campaign would be good I, I feel like having tried to present that image that that definitely needs to be um, a campaign workshop and I will actually create a dummy campaign so it's all there show you in MailChimp exactly how to do this thing um, and I, I promise when you see it it's a lot more it's a lot more simple than it sounds um, I trained uh, a group of fundraisers how to do this and then they've also then been sharing this with other people and they found it quite easy to to pick it up and show people it's not as complicated as I just made it appear. So apologies for my, um, yeah, my not, not sometimes not so good at teaching things, good at showing things. I'm like a practical, like need to do it to understand it kind of person. Um, and great. So I, what I'll, I think also if, um, if it, it, particularly if you're working for a, um, yeah, it, for, it, with a food bank, for example, um, e getting on top of email campaigns would be really, um, a really, a really good thing to do. So I'll set up a workshop. It would probably be like a lunchtime workshop, um, but I'll post in the Thriving Food Hub's Facebook group about that, and we'll try and find a time that works for everybody, and that gives me time then to prep the dummy campaign. And I'll try and show you an example of what I mean about building upon a story as well. Um, yeah, so that's coming. And how far in advance do you recommend discussing different seasonal things? As in Christmas starts late November. Yes, okay. Um, what's the minimum lead in time for advertising, would I suggest? So I think there's planning I would do as far in advance as you possibly can. Um, so that's your own personal planning. But then when you're actually then starting to communicate these campaigns, I would, it would really depend on your audience. And I feel like sometimes that's like a frustrating answer that I give a lot is it just depends on your customers. but. I really think it's a good idea to look at what, not just, I say look at what the supermarkets are doing, but I know that the supermarkets aren't like, you know, people that we want to look to as, as voice of inspiration, um, but they do have, they, they really understand um, customer behavior and they know when people are thinking about these things and when is a good time to start to thinking about these things. So even though we all feel a little bit like, is it, are we doing Christmas advertising already? What? Um, actually, by the time that supermarkets start talking about it, that's because um, people are starting to then prepare for, for Christmas. Um, so I would say, as a good rule of thumb, if you start seeing um, Christmas stuff cropping up around you on the high street, then it's a good time to start communicating your own plans. I would say mid-November is a good time um, because people then start thinking about gifts for Christmas. And it also means that if you talk about that mid-December, then even if people aren't buying gifts for Christmas in mid-December, but they're buying them at the end of December, it means that then you're like front of mind, um, or at least you're in mind. They've had this prompt of different ideas of things they could get with you. And you'll put, uh, you know, and if you're a food enterprise, you'll probably find that your, your customers want to support you. So if they can buy a lovely gift from you that's handmade and awesome, they're gonna choose that over like a, a Marks and Sparks chocolate box kind of thing. So it's, um, so I would say that, and it does depend on the event. So with Easter, you probably won't need as much lead up time as you would for Christmas, because it's probably more around the food that people are buying for, for Easter. So, you know, for that, it could even just be communicating it a couple of weeks in advance. Um, Mother's Day, again, people might be thinking about gifts for Mother's Day. And it's also with things like Mother's Day or Father's Day, you're also doing a service in a way by talking about it because it's reminding people that it's happening so they don't forget it. Um, so that's, yeah. So I would say that remembering what you're doing there is actually also a bit of a service. Don't forget it's Mother's Day a week from now or two weeks from now. Um, and yeah, so it's totally dependent on what I, I would trust your best judgment on that because you know your audience the best um but having said that 
Christmas means more playing um, back to school. This is a, the, one of the, just I want to give this example as well, because this is another way of realizing how this can help your, 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 your customers to trust you. Because if you're offering um, options which make their life, like parents' lives easier with back to school, like preparing lunch boxes for school, and you're talking about that at the beginning of September, it's like, again, this is a service that you're offering. It's helping parents to then feel, okay, okay, this is gonna be a bit easier because I can get this from the food hub and yeah. So it's, yeah. So with back to school, it could be at the beginning of September. Um, there's some things that could just be ongoing. So say over the summer, you might wanna be quite reactive with something. So with summer campaign, you could be having, like if it's really sunny weather um, or you spy on the weather forecast, you're gonna have like a heat wave, then you might wanna be talking about like summer barbecue options if you sell meat for your food enterprise. And so it's like um, there's some some things that are planned in advance, and some things you might just want to have. If you've planned summer a summer campaign, we can talk a bit about barbecues. We can talk a bit about I don't know, like Wimbledon, or you can, like does Wimbledon happen in the summer? I'm not a tennis like a tennis player. So anyway, I was thinking strawberry, so it must be summer. But um, things that are maybe like a bit more kind of ad hoc, then you might want to just maybe plan in advance. This could come up in the summer. And then you've got the idea there in the bank, if that makes sense. So you want to talk about barbecues at some point. So you then keep an eye out like, oh, it's going to be really sunny next week. Oh yeah, I could post about um, barbecues. So, um, and again, also if it's like a, um, by, think, by being camp, so I talk about seasonal, so I might be running over a little tiny bit here, but I'm talking about seasonal campaign planning, but what I'm, the reason I picked seasonal for this is because seasonal planning works really well for food enterprises, particularly for food enterprises who are part of the sustainable food movement because food in itself is intrinsically seasonal. Um, but also campaign planning on all levels is really useful. And say, for example, if you have supporter members or um, memberships or don donors, then you could, what could also be a campaign, you could have a year long campaign around becoming a supporter member. But you could have a year round campaign um, where you have certain comms, you know, that you put out maybe once or twice a month where you're asking people to make donations, for example. So a campaign is just like, it's almost a way of organizing your marketing into things that you'll be talking about that have a goal and you want to achieve. Um, and with seasonal campaign planning, it could be that over Christmas, you want to achieve 25% more sales than you did the year before. And that's an okay goal to have as a food enterprise because, um, the more that you grow, uh, and that translates into more people having access to yummy, sustainable local food as opposed to the other options. But that could be your um, goal over Christmas, or it could be bringing on new customers. I feel like I lost my train of thought there. Oh, it's the coffee. Sorry. Um, are there any more questions? Um, does anyone want to share just before we drop off any of their experience of seasonal, any seasonal campaigns you might have run? Or... I think I, I can't share anything that we have done, but I just felt that last Christmas sort of came and went and we had only just set up and it was a huge opportunity that we missed um, because we were just finding our feet really. Mm -hmm. So I, I was, um, yeah. I sort of made a mental note that this Christmas needs to be better prepared. And uh, so this was the beginning of that. So thank you for that. And I need to um, maybe put some thoughts as to what we do and how we do it. Um, and you had you had the vouchers um, as one of your slides there. At one point there was uh, so possibly, I, I got the wrong end of the stick, but I thought there was um, some work going on to make voucher use a little bit simpler on OFN. Was I right about that? Yeah, I'm not. I, there has been an update, but I'm I'm not I'm not sure what it was. Sometimes I'm in my kind of marketing bubble and I forget yeah. about it. But I'll I'll find out. Um, there might have been some links on that slide actually. So when I share the slides, I'll just if there's a link, I'll mention in the comments um, about that for you so that you yeah. can. Yeah, yeah. I, I need to I, I need to find out because um, I think before it was a case of it was yeah the. The, the voucher functionality was there, but then you had to manually sort of keep track of it all. Mm -hmm. And I think it was something to do with possibly linking that back into FN in some way so that... Yeah, I'll just make a note of it. Yeah. Because uh, I feel like I've heard something, some movement on that, but I'm not sure, but okay. I will, I'll follow that, I'll follow that, that up and I'll put yeah. that in the, 
in the comments. Um, um, and also hampers, um, you know, how um, how we organize hampers also would be really handy. Um, not, not, not something I'm throwing to you, it's more I need to get my head around how we're going to do it. Um, because, yeah, I guess they would need to be made at the time and so that's all just and something that we couldn't deal with last year but i've got some um actually there's some really amazing resources that um so we did a couple of really great seasonal webinars last year um and that was also not just me speaking but talking to other hubs who and talking about what they've done and there was like a quite a big conversation and one of them around hampers that i think it was um house and local food hub and tamar um, talking about how they made, and also maybe Stroudco, um, talking about how they made hampers work. So I'll find that and and, send, and I'll also put that link um, in the event page on the Food Hub group so that you can then, if you if you have time, maybe have, listen to that um, webinar. Because can that you, was- Can you tag me when you do that? Yeah. Are you able to do that? Thank yeah. you. That would be really can good. I, Thanks. Can I just say something about hampers? Because I'm we're not a food hub, although we're a member of a food, of our local food hub. This is a market, country market. Um, we had, we've done quite well with hampers some years. Last year was, well, because it was last year, it was rubbish. But um, we generally have something saying, what do you want in the hamper that you're buying for somebody else? Okay, so this is gonna be wrapped in the ribbons and everything. You know, you, you have these options. You, you can put preserves in, you can put a cake and it's gotta be a long lasting cake because it's going to be, you know, purchased in what, beginning of December and consumed in, you know, at Christmas or something like that. Marzipan fruits, because I used to make marzipan fruits handmade and hand formed and hand painted and stuff. And things like that would go in to a hamper if requested. So you could, we handed out things saying, what do you want in your hamper? Little leaflets. So that's a thing to do, like you give the customer the choice. I don't know how you'd have to arrange that with your producers, obviously, but giving the customers maximum choice and then they have to say by day X what they want for collection on whatever day. And then other times they walk in off the street and they say, I'd like to buy a hamper. And we say, well, choose from these tables. What would you like? And, and we'll wrap it to you. Mm -hmm. So there's quite a difference in approach, but nice. that worked for us. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, and I think that was um, some of the things that came up in that conversation was just, again, that kind of logistics <clears throat> from a food hub of if producers have these items, but then this item isn't there and, and like managing that and some of the different, like, so yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting conversation that kind of talked um, about different ways of doing it, but also some of the things that can go wrong. So it could be that kind of forewarned, forearmed and yeah. <laughs> well, we, we also had, um, the option, I think, and I don't remember quite what happened there, but the option of saying, spend 20 pounds and you get, you know, so you can have it already set out in a sense on, on pieces of paper. You know, you can have two jars of jam or, or chutney and, and marmalade or something, you know, something like that. So you can, you can give customers an idea of what they could put in. So. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll share the links um, to that in, and there's also there's also a really nice um, seasonal webinar that we did that was just around Christmas. Um, and I still feel August might be, I mean, like you'd be very prepared if you're preparing Christmas now. So I might, um, I'll pop that in there, but I'm also, don't worry if you don't watch it, I'll probably be resharing that. Well, I'll, I'll be doing another um, seasonal marketing webinar um, probably around mid-September anyway, just, and that's when I'll probably be talking solely about Christmas. So, um, so there'll be another prompt uh, <laughs> from me, like think about Christmas. Um, yeah, because it really is, I mean, Christmas in particular is a really good time to bring on new customers and I'll probably be talking about that more um, in, in, in that webinar. Uh, so. Awesome. So any last questions before we sign off for the, for the evening? Cool. Okay, well, thanks everyone. And thanks so much for the questions. Um, it's so great to get to the end and then have, yeah, have, have a, yeah, have, have had a really responsive chat. So thanks for that.